Thank you for joining media. We'll start with Nia Coffey. We'll also hear from Taya Cooper and Derek Fisher today. We'll go over to Chris Camello with Nightcast. Hey, hey Nia, thanks for taking the time. Um, I, I Can you hear me okay? Yes, oh, yes. Okay, okay perfect. <laughs> Uh, no, so um, yeah, plus I got a mask on too, so that doesn't help. Um, <laughs> I, no, I just wanted to know, um, how do you guys going into um, Sunday's game, talk, talking about wiping the slate clean and just starting fresh and potentially going on a, on a run? Like, are you guys prepared for, for that challenge? And how do you feel about it personally? 100%. Um, I feel like we are in a really good place and we feel like this is a time for us to, you know, make our comeback, but just focusing on one day at a time, focusing on what we need to do for that particular day um, and just keep moving forward with that same belief and hope that, you know, we are capable, which we are. And I'm, I'm excited about it personally. Chris, do you have another one? Oh, uh, no. Go to no, Sabrina Merchant with SB Nation. Hi, Nia. Hi. Uh, I'm curious, uh, is there anything from the first half of the season that you in particular wanted to address, you know, coming into this second part, both personally and as a team? Um, can you rephrase that? Sorry. Yeah. So was there anything that um, stands out from the first half of the season that you particularly want to work on individually and then also mm -hmm. as a team? Yeah, for sure. So I think one thing that, you know, we've always wanted to improve on and just uh, continue to grow is just our chemistry on offense. I mean, just from the beginning, we just had a, um, a lot of new players. So that comes with the time of transitioning and just learning. And I think, you know, we're 100% getting a lot better than where we were. So just keep growing in, um, in that area specifically. And then what about you in particular? Um, I would say just to just be able to adapt and to react um, and just be a little bit more flexible. Thanks. We'll go to Miriam Swanson with the LA Daily News. Hey, Nia. Um, hey, so how's NECA look out there and then what's it like uh, playing you know, on the court with her again after her having missed so much time? Um, she's great. I love it. I'm excited. Do you, does it, as far as like chemistry, you guys, you know, you talked about chemistry. Um, what is the chemistry building process like with the, with a player like NECA? Um, I mean, her presence just really changes everything. She's such a great leader. So she just, you know, really binds us together. So I'm just, I'm thrilled she's back. <laughs> Uh, we'll go to Rafik Lewison with nothing but sports talk. This is Rafik with nothing but that sports talk. I just want to ask you, like, if you had a chance to watch the Olympics, how do you feel about the way that USA women's and the three-on-three -three teams progress on the way towards getting gold? Yes, I did watch. Shout out Kelsey Plum. Um, I was so excited to see, you know, how they competed out there. And it was just amazing that, you know, they were able to get USA's first gold as a team um, sport and just the first for three and three for the women's side. So it was amazing to see them. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank hey, you. We'll be next.
All right, questions for Taya Cooper. We'll start with Eric Ayala with Lockdown Women's Basketball and Slam. Thank you. Um, Taya, I'm actually doing a feature on uh, one of your friends and former teammates, uh, Diamond DeShield, so I hope you'll indulge me. Um, but I, I just wanted to ask you, uh, uh, when you look at Diamond's game and how she's been able to develop in the WNBA, I mean, does anything surprise you? I, I couldn't hear you. Who is this about? Um, I, I was just asking, is there anything that surprises you about what Diamond has been able to do in the WNBA so far? Um, no. Um, I, I don't really know. <laughs> And, uh, you know, in, in the next three to five years, uh, wh where do you see Diamond's game being able to go? Do you see her being able to be, uh, you know, MVP type Cam did it, WNBA champion? What are your thoughts? Um, I feel like everybody's capable of, you know, achieving whatever they put their mind to. Um, yeah, I think anybody can change their game and develop new skills and want, you know, you do that, you are able to achieve different goals. And I think anybody is able to do that. So yeah, I think she will be able to do that in the future. Miriam Swanson with the LA Daily News. Hey Taya, I just wanted to ask about um, practicing and playing at Staples Center. I mean, this Sunday will be your first uh, pro game there at Staples. Are you looking forward to it? And, and what was it like out there today? Yes, it will be my first time. Um, it was a great feeling. It's, um, it's huge. And um, it kind of it kind of looks like the end of loving basketball, and um, yeah, it's really nice to be out there. It's nice to like see uh, Los Angeles Sparks on the court instead of the Lakers. So it was cool. Uh, all right, well, I guess welcome home. <laughs> we'll go to Tukney Nguyen with the LA Times. Hi, Jane, how are you? Oh, I'm good. How are you? I'm good. So obviously you never want the types of injuries that you guys had in the beginning of the season, but how do you think those, those openings on the court when not having Christy and stuff um, kind of helped you or forced you to grow your own game that's going to be beneficial in the long run? Um, I think I, I, I've learned a lot from KT and um, with playing with her and then having her on the sidelines also. Um, so it's really like the best of both worlds. I got to learn with her and learn with her as a coach or, you know, as um, a teammate, but not on the floor. So it was great. It's very beneficial. I mean, I wouldn't wish that on nobody, but, um, you know, the positive side of it is the fact that we get to learn from her from both angles and then she's coming back. So speaking to that coming back, how does she look to you on the court? It's been a while since we've gotten to see Christy out there. Um. KT look good. She looks great. Her body look good. Um, I don't. I don't think it was really an injury. I think it was her eye. So I mean, <laughs> she's looking good before, and she still looks the same now. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Chris Camello with Nightcast Media. Hey Taya, thanks for taking the time today. Um, I just wanted to know uh, how you spent the break and uh, did you spend it on you know putting work into the game? Because you obviously you did have kind of a Kind of a roller coaster first half of the season. Uh, so I, I was just wondering how you spent that time off and what you're looking forward to in the second half of the season, personally. Um, I spent a lot of time with my family. So I got to be with my brothers. I got to watch them play. I got to work out. I got to, um, I spent a lot of time in the gym, whether it was with them or watching them or um, preparing for what, you know, where Sharif is at now. So I think that um, I'm better. My energy is uh, refreshed. And um, yeah, I feel rejuvenated, so I'm excited. Time for one more with Taya. We'll go back to uh, Miriam Swanson with the LA Daily News. Hey Taya, you mentioned working out with your brothers. I wanted to ask about Sharif, you know, NBA player now. Um, what, kind of, I guess, what, what was, uh, were you proud of him and his journey and, and what do you foresee for him? And just kind of, what was that experience like as a sister? You know, it's so crazy because like, our lives have been like replicas of each other. Um, from me going to McEachin High School to him going to McEachin High School to 
my first year, I think we went undefeated in one state and then he did it the year after that. So it was just crazy how everything is just like happening in the same way. Um, I'm super proud of him. Uh, it's amazing to watch, you know, the fact that he saw me do it and he wanted to do the same thing. He's doing it. So I'm super proud. Um, it was crazy to actually be at one of his games and he in a professional uniform, actually. Um, so, yeah, I'm super happy. Thanks, everyone. Derek Fisher will be next. All right, we'll start with questions for GM and head coach Derek Fisher. We'll start with Rashawn Haylock with Spectrum Sportsnet and KTLA. Hey, coach, how's it going? Good, Rashawn. How you doing? Doing all right. Um, when you when you faced Indiana the first time, it seemed like you just you really were able to like impose your will in in, in a sense. Um, how different? do you envision this team being, you know, this time around? Um, our team or their team? Their team. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure really as far as their group, to be honest. Uh, you know, we're so laser focused on, you know, who we are, who we're trying to become, what we're doing on the court. Um, you know, Marianne Stanley's a fantastic basketball coach. So uh, I have to assume that the more time with her, that, that their team will be better. Uh, they were playing, you know, better basketball in terms of wins and losses going into the break. Uh, so, you know, whether that carries over uh, to, to the second half of the season, uh, you know, they'll find out about, you know, where they stand and, and what their team will look like. But, um, you know, <laughs> we can't, really spend too much time trying to figure everybody else out. Uh, we're just trying to continue to do the work every day um, to continue to, to discover and, and, um, and create who we want to be. So uh, we respect every opponent. Um, and so we're, we're going to prepare for Indiana um, as, as though, you know, <laughs> they're the best team in the league. The records are out of the window. Um, and, and we're going to try to go out there and, and get a win on our home court. You, um, Obviously, you're dealing with pros, um, but a lot of these players haven't played inside Staples Center. So just how important is it for you to have these practices here and just kind of get acclimated, you know, prior to the lights really coming on on Sunday? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, as an organization and a team, we, we felt like it was vital to, uh, to, you know, try and get as much time here uh, as Staples as we can, um, you know, to, to be – honest and transparent, it's, it's, it's tough, uh, you know, for our team, uh, you know, year in and year out to find the availability to get into this building. It's one of the busiest places in the world. Uh, obviously with COVID and the pandemic, you know, nobody was on their home court last season. Uh, but even to start our season this year, uh, when you consider everything that we've had to go through with the injuries, et cetera, um, you know, not being able to be here, is, it, it, it creates more challenges for us as a group. So these days of practice leading up to Sunday um, and, and this three game set that we have, you know, coming out of this break, um, they're really important, you know, to, to have a chance to be a good team. You need to be able to, to protect your home court and, and figure out a way to win those games. Uh, so we're hoping that, you know, this can kind of be a foundation to establishing a home court feel uh, that, that can carry over to some success. Last one for me. Um, what, 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 what does this team need from Taya over the, the course of these next 13? Um, I, I think, a, you know, which for all, I think, young players and, you know, even veterans to some degree, like a, a consistency in performance that isn't necessarily based on stats and points per game. Right. Uh, it's, it's based on impact. Uh, every night you can impact the game. And I, and I think those are lessons that Tay is continuing to learn as she grows and, and matures as a player. Um, her, her defensive energy and, and tenacity, uh, it changes things for our team. It impacts the opponent. Uh, it gets us out in the transition into the open court. 
Uh, and she can't waver from that, uh, whether she starts, whether she comes off the bench, whether she plays 30 minutes or 15 minutes. Um, she has to be the same in terms of her defensive energy, intensity, uh, her communication, uh, e even her smile, it impacts our team. And we have to see positive energy from Taya, not just physical positive performance. Um, so she, you know, she's been important to, to what we've tried to do uh, this season. And, uh, you know, we're going to need that coming out uh, to start this, this portion of our season. Miriam Swanson of the LA Daily News. Hey, Coach, um, it's talking about Staples. So, what what was it like to be back today? And, and I know for some of these girls, it's, it's their first time. Like Taya was like, this, this is their first time on that court. Um, but did it did it feel like a homecoming? I mean, obviously, you have history there. Um, so what was it like? Um, no, I, I mean, I, I think our players really just enjoyed the the uh, the opportunity. Like, it's hard to explain to people uh, how displaced. You know, I think specifically our players feel uh, on a day to day basis when it comes to having a home. Uh, so when they get a chance to, you know, have a practice and, and get a chance to really feel what it's like to be in this building that, you know, we call our home court. Um, it's, it's a great feeling. And I, I think they, they really enjoyed it. Uh, you know, we're we're hopefully going to get a chance to, to 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 get back at it tomorrow. Um, and get some more reps here, and then we'll have shoot around on Sunday morning, um, and, and then we'll get out there and compete. But this is important. Uh, it, it really is, and we're thankful for the opportunities. Uh, again, we know that uh, this, this building is, is quite busy, um, and, you know, we got two men's teams that were, you know, competing late into the playoffs, and, um, you know, the Kings hockey team, and there's a lot that happens here, but, you know, we can't continually – um, you know, say that we want to do better by our women and not do better. So we just got to keep working and figure out a way uh, to create more space here um, so that this can feel like a home court every night. Thanks, Miriam. Time for two more. We'll go to Chris Camello at Nightcast Media. Hey, Coach. Thanks for taking the time this afternoon. Thank you. Um, yeah, so just kind of talking about, uh, you know, the, the second half of the season, you know, you, you mentioned that you can't go on a run without winning one, but um, how, what's kind of been the focus that you've really reiterated into your players through these, through this first week of practice back leading up to uh, Sunday's game? Uh, yeah, they're like, you know, you know, greatness, excellence, however you want to describe it. Um, you know, it's, it's really found, built, uh, manifested through the most mundane, boring, fundamental habits uh, that, that you can display, uh, you know, on a daily basis. Uh, so, you know, if you want to win, uh, it, it's easy to try to show up and have the adrenaline of the game day, and the fans and the lights be what energizes you and fool you into thinking that, you're going to win because you're hyped up. Um, but if you haven't done the work, and laid the foundation um, of how to close out, how to talk, how to communicate, how to set a screen at the proper angle, how to pass the ball at the proper angle, um, you know, how to really work together as a team to be successful, uh, then it won't happen. You, you may win one, you may win a few, uh, but at the end of the day, you won't come through when it matters the most. So that's what we try to get back to. Uh, over these last couple of weeks are, you know, just the foundational habits of good offense and good defense. Uh, and we think if we can help, you know, put our players in, in the right position to be successful and they have the right habits formed, uh, we'll figure it out from there. Uh, one with Sabrina Merchant, SB Nation. Hey, Derek. Uh, good to see you. Thank you. Uh, uh, you guys were able to do some really interesting things with your small lineups in the first part of the season, I guess, sometimes out of desperation, just because of who was available. But uh, do you anticipate, you know, going to those units still in the second half of the season with NECA coming back and Lauren and even Shanae? Uh, yes. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. I think uh, it's, it's the way that we designed the team when we, when we put the final 12 player roster together. Uh, it was designed with that in mind to be versatile, uh, to be able to play different lineups. Um, you know, I've been telling people for 
the last several days now. Uh, it's unfortunate that more people didn't get a chance to see how good of a player Jasmine Walker uh, was and is going to be because um, she, she, she was going to be able to impact us quite a bit. Um, and so, yeah, we still plan to, to take advantage of our versatility uh, and having NECA back on the court, uh, you know, adding Shanae's ability to rebound, defend, um, like that, that gives us the versatility to play what may feel like is small because they're not six, seven, um, but we feel like it, it gives us the right balance in terms of size, length, athleticism. Um, and it could, it could look like a small ball lineup, um, but still play with a, a little more size than what we've been able to do, um, you know, leading into the break. Uh, so, you know, lineups that can include um, Shanae, Neca, Nia, um, you know, that, that's exciting. Uh, to be able to look forward to. And then when you add, you know, Brittany Sykes and her length and athleticism, and we feel like Lauren Cox has, you know, gotten more comfortable with our team and what we're trying to do. Uh, so we, you know, we feel like we're in a better position to, you know, whether it's playing what you consider to be bigger at times. Um, but, uh, you know, NECA is that, that real X factor and, and kind of Swiss army knife that allows us to play quote unquote bigger or smaller and still be able to get the things done we want to get done. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. All right, thanks, everyone.